shoot. I knocked a bunch of people out. They couldn't they they couldn't touch me. I mean So they contacted I did get you in pro boxing. What's that? So they contacted you after like you had a couple fights and then you heard from them or did you do you have a management that did it or Um I and I had met so I was like uh five and oh and I went and I fought um at Island Fights, which is a Roy Jones Jr. promotion. And I knocked this dude out in the first round, and then we were hanging out at the bar after. And that's when I met Abraham Kawa, and he was with Yoel Romero. And I asked Yoel, I was like, man, you trust this guy? He was like, with my life. And, like, I didn't understand it back then, but, I mean, Abe's a great manager. Uh, I understand it now, you know what I mean? I like... I like to pay that guy because he just sets me up with so many good opportunities and um, he takes care of me. Something came through on Facebook. I, I had one more fight and I beat this kid, David Mundell. We, we had a crazy fight as amateurs and then I fought him as a pro when I was 6-0 and oh, and I knocked his ass out too. So I was 7-0 and oh with seven knockouts. And then something came through. They said, oh, in two weeks, Hung Yu Lim, this guy needs an opponent. And I sent it to Abe. And the Abe called back and said, we got it. And I showed up. A couple weeks later, man, the rest is history, you know. Yeah. And I've had some lessons. I've had some ups and downs. The thing is, I feel like I accomplished all my goals very early. Yeah. Like, probably by... The, the Ellenberger knockout. And then I was going to fight Tiago Alves, and that was going to be huge for me. I was excited, but then he didn't make it, so I ended up getting this. I ended up getting Dominic Reyes' his little brother, and I, I beat him quick, and then I had done everything I had wanted to do. And I kind of ran out of ideas. I always had ideas going into the fights, like the elbow with Ellenberger. I said yeah, it was mad, that's a massive elbow. Um, and then I had ideas of things I wanted to say on the mic after. And then I ran out of things to say. I didn't want. I was done talking to people. People was just. There was always going to be some nasty hater somewhere, no matter how good I was, no matter what I did, and. And that I let that get to me for a little bit instead of just, you know, remembering that, okay, let them hate. I got to do me at the end of the day. I'm getting in there, not them. I can't let that affect me. Yeah. And I did. I let stuff affect me. So now it's like I'm going to come back with a clean slate. It's like how I always thought it was. I got my beautiful girlfriend with me. I'm going to show her how badass I am. I'm going to get in this cage. I'm like, watch what I do to this motherfucker. I'm going to be talking to her while I beat the brakes off of Mickey Gall next week. <laughs> if he shows up, if he makes it to the fight, I'll be ready for anybody. So, you know, I'm ready, bro.